videos we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Tyler Perry isn't exactly known for having subtle tastes when it comes to his real estate portfolio. This multi-talented actor, director, screenwriter, and producer has bought and sold a handful of opulent estates over the years, especially in Los Angeles and Atlanta where his epic Tyler Perry Studios is also located. Considering Tyler is worth an estimated $1 billion, he has invested some of that quite wisely in properties with a story to tell, reclaiming land with ties to slavery and racial injustice in the process. While his dream mansion in Atlanta near his custom studio has been in the works for a few years now, perfection does take time, and in the meanwhile, he's called a few other stunning places home too. While Tyler Perry is massively successful today with dozens of movies and eight TV shows on his resume, he didn't have the happiest upbringing to start. Reportedly, his birth name is from Emmett Perry Jr., was named after a father who was abusive and, as he would later find out, was not his real dad, so he changed his name. Tyler was born in New Orleans in 1969 in this three-bedroom home located on Barone Street. The star survived a traumatic childhood full of abuse at the hands of his guardians, even though his mother attempted to keep him safe. Looking at the home Tyler once lived in during his childhood, we can see it's now fully renovated and likely looks like a completely different place. Interior photos from when the house was last up for sale show it was remodeled and expanded by the last owner, who actually bought the property from the Perry family in 2013 for just under $150,000. Along with a reconfigured layout in certain common areas like the hallway, there's also an all new kitchen with marble countertops, and the home now even boasts solar paneling on the roof. A swing still hangs from the front porch overlooking the front garden, which makes the petite home look charming. In 2004, Tyler described in an interview how he would often look out of the front window of his house in New Orleans at the mansion's two blocks north, while two blocks south were the projects, the territory of gangs, drugs, and crime. Being poised between the mansions and poverty became my metaphor for life, he said. Tyler Perry's current home is reportedly still in the works as it has been for some years now. He bought 1,200 acres of land, and it was reported by TMZ back in 2018 that construction on the mega mansion had begun, with the abode being built in a gilded age style. Conveniently for Tyler, this dream home is also only 32 minutes from his sprawling 300 plus acre film studios, so the perfect commute to work. Reports say his mansion will span 35,000 square feet of living space once it's complete, and from aerial views we can truly see how massive it is. Although we don't know what the home's interiors are looking like just yet, he has plans to turn the property into an organic farm. He wants his son Amon, who he shares with ex-partner Gilila Bikeli, to have an appreciation for land, nature, and animals. And reportedly, they'll have horses and other animals on the farm. Alongside the hulking main house, there also sits a second smaller structure that could be used as a guest house on Tyler's property. There is even an airport runway which is convenient for the multi-talented star who has in the past once possessed a pilot's license. In October 2019, the hardworking writer posted a video to his social media from his home in LA, it seems, to advertise the fact he'd been live tweeting from the home through his show, The Oval, which he wrote, directed, and produced. That same year, he had given a peek into his kitchen, which is also assumed to be in the LA home, that he's stayed in from time to time while the Atlanta mansion is being constructed. This kitchen, which we got a peek at, is where he was displaying his Oscar trophy at the time when he took home the Gene Herschelt Humanitarian Award. In early 2020, Tyler showed fans he was continuing to be hard at work from home while posting a photo in his writer's room, complete with huge stone fireplace and a roaring fire, leather armchairs, and cozy rug. Tyler Perry Studios is 330 acres in the heart of Atlanta. This was all Fort McPherson army base. Nearby his mega mansion in Atlanta is another one of Tyler's big creations, Tyler Perry Studios. In 2015, Tyler announced plans to expand his studio in Atlanta by acquiring Fort McPherson, which served as a Confederate army base during the American Civil War, and expand is exactly what he did. On his new, sprawling 330-acre studio complex in Atlanta, Georgia, you can visit the White House, a classic southern mansion, a lake cabin, 
and more within minutes. Previously, Tyler's studio was already home to the production of more than 15 movies and over 800 episodes of his TV shows. These days, his studio complex is said to be larger than Disney, Paramount, Sony, and Warner Studios combined. He bought the massive lot for over $30 million after outgrowing the smaller studio only six miles away. And about $250 million more went into restoring the site's 19th century homes and building the rest. Tyler Perry Studios has 12 state-of-the-art sound stages, each named after an African-American in the entertainment industry, production offices, and sets. One of the most impressive being a three-story stucco replica of the White House, which Tyler made sure was built to scale. He's using this as a set for his BET drama The Oval, so you already know that there is even an Oval Office film set inside. There are many other impressive sets on the huge complex, like a charming historic residential district from the south, trailer park, county jail, bank, lakeside cabin, posh theater, farmhouse, chapel, commercial jet, and much more. These are going to act as scenes for Tyler's present and future films and other production companies. Tyler Perry Studios also has 200 extra acres of green space, and Tyler says he's not even close to being finished. He wants to put that land to use. He said, I'm looking to create a six-lane highway, or he might want a European-style city, adding, you know, something with winding cobblestone streets, we could use it for Paris. Back in 2007, Tyler bought a 17-acre estate in the Paces neighborhood of Buckhead, Atlanta. Paces is said to be the most affluent area in Atlanta, with home prices even reaching upwards of $20 million. Tyler lived in this palace with his family up until 2016, and when he sold it for a massive $17.5 million, it was the biggest sale ever for a private residence in the Georgia capital at the time. The mansion was resold in 2018, this time for $21 million, and with the grandeur and size of this place, it's not hard to see why. Tyler's previous Atlanta estate was 34,688 square feet of living space, but then again, his dream mansion that's in construction will be slightly bigger. This property featured seven beds and 14 baths and was designed as a European style villa with marble floors and huge columns, among other opulent details. Upon entering the home, the foyer has a grand dual staircase with a giant chandelier in the middle and looks like something out of a fairy tale. This mansion had a great room, which boasted double height ceilings and glass doors leading out to a balcony. Attached to the chef's kitchen, there's also a more casual living room with vaulted ceilings, a marble fireplace, and open staircase leading to the upper level. The formal dining room in Tyler's former home walks out to the upper balcony and is decorated with wall paintings. There's also a wood paneled study or library and another dramatic library slash office with black chandelier, red accents, and a zebra rug. While also on this level, there's a games room with a wet bar. The master suite's spacious and has a private balcony entry, offering views from all angles. One of the extra bedrooms used to be a spa, so it has a freestanding tub, while a vintage paint job on the walls here makes the room feel medieval. There's also a medieval feel in the mansion's home movie theater, where vaulted ceilings here and in the attached lounge resemble an old cathedral. The theater has seating for 18 and is located on the lower level of the house. Apparently, there's also a resistance pool on this level. Other highlights include a wine cellar, sauna, generator system that can power the whole estate, and a guardhouse. Out back, you'll find some guest quarters and layered landscaping, while underneath the tennis courts, there's an indoor ballroom complete with catering kitchen and restrooms. Also on the property, there's a massive 70,000 gallon infinity pool, all of which is protected by a top of the line security setup and imposing gates. After checking out where Tyler Perry calls home, including what we know about his Atlanta mansion that's being built and his studios, that'll bring today's tour to a close. But before we leave, answer me this. If you could build your own studio and create any movies or shows you wanted, what would be some of the dream sets you would want to create there? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on your notifications. I'm Kara the Vampire Slayer, follow me on Instagram to chat and if you'd like to check out another tour before we wrap up, then stay tuned for this one where we look inside the homes of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, whom Tyler once rented his LA mansion out to. I'll see you all next time. Bye. If you tuned in to Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's recent documentary on Netflix, Harry and Meghan, then this estate we're about to show you might look familiar. 
or at least the epic and open air living room that served as a backdrop for most of their confessionals. If you didn't already guess, this mansion isn't the couple's actual home, despite being located nearby in the same area of Montecito, California. This grand Mediterranean Spanish revival home where they filmed the show was actually put up for sale recently at $33.5 million, boasting over 13,000 square feet of space and amazing views of the ocean. The Duke and Duchess his real $14.65 million home is situated in the same Santa Barbara area. However, they've chosen to keep this one a bit more under wraps. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. In the new Netflix docu-series Harry and Meghan, the royal couple sits down for some interviews set in a stunning luxury house. Now, if you thought this was Prince Harry and Meghan's actual family home, then you'd be wrong because they used a mansion located less than a 10 minute drive from where they live with their kids. The spacious home that was witnessed in the highly criticized Six Part documentary show is a similar opulent estate which is currently on the market for $33.5 million. This home is also in the same stunning area where the Duke and Duchess live of Montecito, California. In fact, only 3.5 miles from them. And it's even more epic than what we see on the documentary. The Mediterranean Spanish Revival style estate is situated on over two acres of land beneath the mountains with amazing views of the oceans, as well as tall palm trees and winding walkways. The mansion's exterior is covered in jungle-like vines and inside, there's a total of almost 13,600 square feet of space, with 800 of those square feet located in the one bed, one bath guest house on top of the garage. The main house offers six bedrooms, six baths, as well as multiple living areas fit for royalty. It's obvious why Harry and Meghan chose this abode for their show. It's also obvious why this mansion utilizes an indoor-outdoor theme throughout its spaces when you consider the amazing views, California weather, and landscaped grounds. There are grand arched doors and windows in almost every space, which not only bring in a ton of natural light, but also provide easy access to the terraces outside. The formal living room has three French doors that open the room out to a column supported covered walkway that runs the full width of the home. Those who watch the docu-series likely recognize the heart of the home or this great room where Harry and Meghan filmed most of it. This sun-filled space boasts a sparkling chandelier, modern furnishings, beamed ceilings, and an open plan layout. Close to here, you'll find the glam dining room with silver leaf ceiling and an elegant library is full of wood paneling, a fireplace, and even a secret door to the master suite. Given this, the master bedroom is actually located on the main level, offering its own sitting area, fireplace, and a private outdoor terrace. The rest of the bedrooms are spread out on the upper level of the home, giving the primary suite its very own privacy. Some other highlights inside the stunning mansion include a massive chef grade kitchen, which opens up to a cozy den. There's a home theater with a fireplace and wet bar, two games rooms, one for the children and one for the adults, a meditation lounge and a gym. Not only do terraces branch off from nearly every room in the house, there's a dining table on one of the terraces to take your meals al fresco, along with an outdoor lounge, a fireplace, and heaters for those cooler nights in Montecito. The sprawling infinity pool spans almost the length of the house and sits on its own deck with an attached patio space. There's also a hot tub, gazebo, and pebbled walkways and stone walls, all of which are surrounded by landscaping and sculptures. There's something for everyone at this estate, as even those who like to be more off the grid can enjoy a generator, a solar power, gray water irrigation system, private well, and other eco friendly additions. Not to mention, there are vegetable beds, citrus and banana trees, and even chicken coops. The compound is great for people who like to entertain as well, given the ample indoor and outdoor space for reportedly up to 200 guests. So while this might not be Prince Harry and Meghan's real house, it sounds like it's comparable. Now, let's check out where they actually live. In the summer of 2020, the Duke and Duchess, who had been looking to settle down in California, finally found the home of their dreams, when they decided to buy a $14.65 million estate in the heart of Montecito. 
the Santa Barbara County enclave located on the water. While more recently there have been some rumors that Prince Harry and Meghan are shopping around for a new home in the exclusive Santa Barbara area of Hope Ranch, for now they are still at the abode that they purchased a couple of years ago. Records show the large property quietly sold in mid-June 2020 to a mysterious trust, but that was only to keep things private, and they secured a $9.5 million mortgage to grab the 7.8-acre compound. Harry and Meghan's home is tucked away on a private gated street, giving them the privacy they crave, next to other equally grand estates. Inside the home spans a whopping 18,671 square feet, with 9 beds and 16 baths. More recently, Meghan revealed that they fell in love with the peaceful property right away. She said, We did everything we could to get this house because you walk in and go joy and exhale and calm. It's healing. You feel free. Built in 2003, the Mediterranean style main abode is decked out in beige and off white decor with rooms like a library, games room, and formal living and dining rooms. Of course, there are also places perfect for the young family to relax together, like the Eat In Chef's Kitchen or the Regal Entertainment Space with wood paneled walls and a huge TV. The mansion is jam packed with the best amenities throughout, such as a gym, separate wet and dry saunas, an arcade, a home movie theater, and of course, an elevator. Since moving in, Prince Harry and Meghan have added their own touches throughout the home, including a grand piano that their friend Tyler Perry gave them as a housewarming present, and Soho House rose water candles in each and every room. A source close to the couple explained, this is the first home either of them have ever owned. They intend to put down their roots in this house and the quiet community, which has considerable privacy. And it seems since that statement was made, the Duke and Duchess most definitely have done just that. Prince Harry and Meghan can also enjoy the country style master suite with wood beam ceilings, ensuite marble bathroom, and access to a private balcony with ivy covered pergola. A 3D floor plan of what their master would be laid out like was recently revealed, and these digitally rendered interiors showed a suite with four separate areas. There was the bedroom itself, the ensuite, a terrace, and a dressing room. The dressing room also offers a sitting area with two chairs next to the window, while the other side is for storage. Meghan also has given fans a look at her home office on her 40th birthday, which boasts a rustic wooden desk, cream chairs, and a traditional fireplace behind her. To round out the office, the rest of the things that she has here followed matching muted and neutral tones for a very organized look. Aside from the main structure, there's also a detached guest house with two beds and two baths. Outside, other highlights are straight from a fairy tale, such as rose gardens, an olive grove, and even a tea house. The property is ideal for their two children to stay entertained, as there's a kid's cottage and even an epic playground that sits within the grounds of the home. For when the adults want to entertain or have their own fun, there's also a lap lane swimming pool and a full-size tennis court out back. The pool is also surrounded by sun loungers and umbrellas, making it perfect to relax or entertain. Just a stone's throw from the ocean, the easygoing neighborhood their home is located is, is the perfect spot for the private family to get some peace. While it's somewhat close to LA, Santa Barbara is relatively secluded, and the more upscale residential areas are even harder to get to. Given Harry and Meghan's run-ins with LA paparazzi in the past, living in Montecito, it just makes sense. While we don't know yet if Prince Harry and Meghan will move to a new mansion in the Hope Ranch neighborhood, for now, we've gotten a look at both their Montecito family property and the estate nearby where they filmed their recent Netflix doc. That being said, I think this brings today's house tour to an end. But before we go, answer this question. Where do you stand on the Prince Harry and Meghan situation in regards to stepping down from the royal family? What would you do if you had the opportunity to be royal? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments as well as what you liked or didn't like about those mansions. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications. My name's Kara the Vampire Slayer. Follow me on Instagram to chat more, and I'll see you all in another video. Bye!